I brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. This week it's from Wago. Lady Ada, what is this week's Ion MPI? Ooh, this week's Ion MPI is pretty exciting. It's terminal blocks. Now you might be like, terminal blocks aren't that exciting. These are, these are really good terminal blocks. Um, this is the 2601 series of terminal blocks um, available at DigiKey. Um, I'm showing here just the image of the four terminal block wide version, but of course they're available from anything from like one up to 12 pieces in a row. Um, on the bottom, uh, you see there's uh, two pins for each one that's for mechanical stability. Basically, this is a wire to board connector. Uh, you have bare wires, either uh, stranded or solid cord. You want to connect them to a circuit board. This is a great way uh, to interface them from Wago, the 2601. Um, so most people are familiar with terminal blocks that look like this. Um, there's little screw terminals at the top and you open them up with a screwdriver and the little mouth opens. You stick the wires in and um, you close them and then you know that makes a good mechanical connection without using um, a specialized cable connector. Like you might be wondering, well, why not just use a JSTPH or you know similar wire to board connector that actually has a housing and contacts? Well, those are usually not rated for very high currents. Um, they're not uh, inexpensive and uh, sometimes they have voltage limitations. What's nice about terminal blocks is they're inexpensive. Uh, they're extremely popular. They're kind of self-documenting. Um, you don't have to worry about the connector coming loose. Um, you can use stranded or solid core wire. They're you know very, very flexible. Um, and they're available in uh, you know 3.5, five millimeter widths. Um, and like again, uh, like I mentioned, they're just extremely easy to use and, and popular, like we've been using them for a very long time. However, there's some trade-offs. The um the Wago connect sorry, the standard terminal blocks, again, like I mentioned, have the screw terminal top. But uh first off, that sometimes they're fill up, sometimes they're flathead. You have the wrong one or you have the wrong size, you can easily strip them. Uh it's sometimes also possible to um insert the wire into like the rising part of the terminal block. Uh, so you think it's connected, but it's actually not. It can come loose. Um, but you know, basically you have to have the right tool for them. You know, that said, we do use them a lot. Um, you know, like here, uh, this one is a flathead, you know, um screwdriver, whereas I think these next ones are uh Phillips. But we use them a lot for motors and power supplies, and again, anything with you know, over 12 volts or over five amps, it's kind of hard to get a wire to board connector with, um, you know, socket and plug that can handle that much current. Um, but we don't like the terminal blocks in some use cases because um, they're not completely infallible. Like people can kind of mess them up. And like I said, you think the wire's in, but it's not, or it's loose and you need the right tool. Um, if you want more information about terminal blocks, because there are a couple different types, um, I did notice that DigiKey has a great video uh, talking about the PCB mount, which is what I tend to use, the barrier strips, which are often used in telephony uh, and feed through, which I think is used um, mostly for electronic or electrical work. The uh, Wagyu ones, the uh, 2601s, um, they come in two types. There's the horizontal type. These are really nice renderings. Uh, showing them off with the levers. And then uh, this is the uh, diagram in the data sheet. These are 3.5 millimeter spacing, so they're very compact. Um, I don't like to use terminal blocks that are more compact than this. They do make them smaller, but I find 3.5 millimeter is is perfect, uh, uh, you know, boundary of having um, not too much board space taken up by the terminal blocks, uh, but also you can use a variety of different wire thicknesses. There's also the vertical style, which I think is kind of neat. So this way the wires go in the top and the levers uh, stick out the side. And again, you can get, uh, you know, any range. I'm just showing like the four or five pin, but um, they do come, you know, up to like, I think 12 plus in a row. And it looks like you can even snap them together if, uh, if you need to. Um, so for the connections, you can use uh, 26 to 16 gauge. If it's stranded, uh, 24 to 16 gauge, and you can actually also push and terminate. So you say solid connector, conductor push and termination. Um, if they're very thin wires, of course, or stranded, you have to open the lever and put the wire in and then close it. But if you're using a solid core wire, you can actually kind of just push it in. And as long as it's uh, 20 gauge or thicker, it'll, it'll push through uh, and it'll make good contact. 
Um, and they're rated for a very high current, I think. Uh, put them aside, actually, because I think it was 10 amps, 300 volts, and they're uh, ULIEC tested as well. So these are um, very high current, very high voltage. And there's a video that we'll show later that actually, uh, you know, people are like, how do you know, you know, what happens if you try to put 50 amps through it? They actually show what happens when they take a, a Wagyu, uh, Wagyu, uh, uh, like wire nut connector. Um, and they put a um, massive amount of current through it and they show like everything melts, but the contact yeah. still. We have two videos that we'll show at the end. So yeah. three minutes all together, but I think it's worth it. Yeah. They make really good stuff. Um, and you know, if you're, if you're, you know, making a product that has very high current capacity, um, motor drivers, power management, electrical work, um, you really do want something that's rated for the high voltage and the high current. And, and these are absolutely, I'm um, going to give you exactly what they, what they say on the tin. Um, so check out all the different options. Um, you know, I picked up, I'll, I'll show in the overhead. I picked up, uh, some of the, uh, five, um, wide horizontal ones, but they've got, uh, different ones in stock. So, you know, whichever one you like. And then, um, they also have, uh, the EDA for your, uh, layout, uh, circuit, uh, circuit board layout software, whether it's Altium or Orcad or Eocad, you can download the footprint, um, and get going. Yeah. But these are very nicely and, made. Uh, you know, just in case it wasn't clear, these are available on DigiKey. They are in stock. And they are in stock. There's 450 in stock as a at the time of this printing. That's right. Um, all right. So you want to show these off? Yeah, there? because they're, they're, first of all, I want to try out the overhead because uh, we updated the overhead. Um, so they're very nice, uh, snappy style. And you can really tell that they're closed or not. They have a nice clicking effect. Oops, sorry. That was your... <laughs> that's you. There's a keyboard. Uh, that's a keyboard. Um, so you can open for for a stranded wire you'll open it and you can see uh the throat open up and then when you snap it closed it closes um but as i mentioned if you have a uh, solid core wire in this case I... i'm gonna be dangerous i'm gonna zoom in oh you're gonna zoom in okay look at this oh wow that's nice so you can actually you can see see the the, the throat terminal see how much i can zoom in whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. okay right. back and up beep 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 beep, beep, beep. okay all right. So you can see here, it makes a really nice grip. And then what's also nice is on the side, they tell you up to, uh, you can see it says nine, so up to nine millimeters um, wide. So you can also just use, I, I was like, I didn't realize you could just push the terminals in, but um, nice feel, nice, uh, good, strong connection. It doesn't, you know, you can push in, but you can't, you can't pull out. It's like the uh, Hotel California. So this is the uh, Wago. 2601 terminal box. Very fancy, very nice. Strongly recommended if you want something a little better than just a uh, plain screw top terminal box. Yeah. Okay, and we're gonna play, um, they have two really good videos and we're gonna play them back to back. Okay. The 222 series connectors are designed for a nominal current of 32 amps. All of these connectors not only exceed the relevant normative requirements, but also provide an additional safety range compared to the normative minimum requirements.
This safety range reflects WAGO's high quality requirements while providing maximum safety even in exceptional circumstances. For example, even in the case of an invalid overload of several times the nominal current, the connector's functionality is provided beyond the stability of other equipment. In the event of a failure of more than three times the nominal current, the conductor insulation melts and the wire starts glowing. This is not the case for WAGO's 222 series splicing connector. Both the connector's electrical functionality and housing insulation remain intact. The connector housing will only melt after a prolonged overload and will eventually drop off the contact. The contact is still intact and the wires remain securely connected. Even after such an extreme test, the contact points continue to meet the normative requirements in terms of contact quality. WAGO. Quality from the... Hi, I'm MPI.